beliefs carry an intrinsic power in our lives. They produce and influence us as much as we construct and manipulate them. They are dynamic in nature and facilitate space, which allows us to make sense of the world around us. They situate history, evoke experiences, and harbor diverse economies of culture. Parking landscapes provide an exemplary setting to which ethnographic research can inquire into deeper understandings of the often mundane and repetitive cultural practices of parking. Parking plays an integral role in our lives, even if we don't perceive its intricate cultural significance. Parkers express a multitude of emotions, manifest a mass of behaviors, and rely on a very particular cultural knowledge. Our team embarked on an anthropological investigation into this multiplex system of parking practices and behaviors. The Nissan Parking Matters semester-long collaboration with San Jose State University's Applied Anthropology Graduate Program aimed to identify the emotions and behaviors associated with parking in and around the San Jose State University area. Our team, which was referred to as Team Landscape, was devised of four professional anthropologists, Giannina, Ari, Johnny, and Kelly, who are currently enrolled in the Applied Anthropology Graduate Program. While identifying our research question, we found the relationships and interactions that people have with their cars, specifically in the context of parking, to be of great interest. We thought that examining these relationships could give insights to the future, possibly of autonomous vehicles, and how that would affect contemporary views of parking, specifically at SJSU. Our group examined the relationship between landscape and emotions surrounding parking on the SJSU campus. These relationships were analyzed through various ethnographic methods. We conducted a survey which was distributed online with participation stimulated through our team members setting up computers with the survey on campus. The survey included questions regarding demographics, how people commute, when they commute, their commute experience, where they park, why they park there, and the overall parking experience. We included photographs in our survey to provoke reactions and emotions that respondents would identify. The survey was aimed to identify emotions surrounding parking practices in various landscapes on campus. Additionally, we conducted informal interviews of parkers, trace analysis of parking landscapes, social media analysis of Twitter regarding parking at SJSU, and participant observation, because essentially we are all students at SJSU and most of us park on campus. After collecting the data from these various methods, we began examining them. The results of these inquiries show that there is a strong, negative association of emotions with parking in campus garages. For instance, a tweet included in our study stated, SJSU will forever hold a place of hatred in my heart for their ridiculous parking situation. Others commented on the time it takes to find parking at SJSU, such as, just wasted a significant amount of my life looking for parking. Another person said, got to school early but late to class because SJSU parking is dumb. Results also revealed the presence of reciprocal relationships amongst parkers and forms of community building situated in parking landscapes. This was seen in one person's tweet that stated, shout out to the guy in SJSU parking lot for giving me his all day parking pass for free. What a gem. Another person tweeted, Plenty of parking at 4th Floor, 4th Street Garage, hashtag SJSU parking. The survey showed similar responses as the social media analysis. We were able to gain more information on where people were parking the most, as well as what times they were parking. We found that in terms of safety, students who parked in the South Campus Garage indicated they felt less safe than those who parked in the North and West Garages. Similarly, when measuring feelings of stress, those respondents who regularly parked in the south garage experienced more stress than those who parked in either the north or west garage. Most students who parked in the south garage did so during the mid-morning, those who parked in the north garage did so in the early morning, whereas students parked in the west garage predominantly sought to find parking in the mid to late afternoon. In analyzing the emotional responses from the photographs provided in our survey, the overall consensus of our participants discerned feelings of anger, stress, and frustration when shown images of parking stubs, parking violations, and poor parking practices. 
Contrary to the negative emotions expressed by participants, images of open parking spaces conjured emotions of happiness and delight. Lastly, our study also unveiled insights into a number of socially appropriate behaviors parkers engage in within parking garages. One obvious illustration of the kinds of power relations associated within parking involves the ways in which students obey and follow their own socially constructed parking rules and regulations. The provided data has revealed a number of significant insights into the complex engagements between human interactions and the parking environments at SJSU. Relatedly, it has also presented insights into the kinds of power relationships associated with placemaking and the ways in which physical landscapes can situate and dispense social knowledge on its occupants. From our preliminary observations, we learned early on that, that, were, that there were in fact a number of social norms and rules exercised by occupants, although no such regulatory policies existed within their parking garages. One predominant social practice exercised included maintaining proper proximities between vehicles. The negative associations with breaking social norms was seen in a tweet that stated, Why must you park so close to my car? I hate parking at SJSU. I wormed my way out of my car. Though this action may seem comprehensible, it reveals unique models of temporal social discipline situated in parking landscapes. What these practices also unveil are the situated entanglements of knowledge linked to parking, as well as the embedded social frameworks that construct behavioral order. Through our research, we see how physical landscapes interpose particular behaviors on the individual and construct within themselves social norms. This research has shed notable insight into the experiential implications autonomous vehicles may have on parking in the prospective future as well as its potential effects on the social embeddedness of landscape. With the succession of autonomous vehicles, how will experiences and emotions change within parking landscapes? What will be lost? What new schemas of placemaking will emerge in these new landscapes? And what new assemblages of knowledge and social relationships will materialize from the habitual use of autonomous vehicles? These questions, along with many others, represent the conjecture to which anthropological inquiry can engage critical research and provide valuable insight into the evolving human landscape of automobility. Through our analysis of emotions associated with landscape, it is apparent that there are many factors to address regarding the design of autonomous vehicles, the services that they would offer, in addition to the stakeholders that would be affected by these changes. We believe that autonomous vehicles could be beneficial to this community and relieve some of the stress and frustration caused by parking if utilized and implemented in the correct way. Through our ethnographic techniques, we were able to identify when certain parking areas were being used at higher frequencies during the day. It would be beneficial for autonomous vehicles that were associated with a drop-off service similar to Uber to know when these high impact times were to avoid more congestion and frustration for other parkers. If the autonomous vehicle were personally owned and operated and ultimately parked, we believed that the knowledge of when people are using certain lots could be utilized for the vehicle to determine a better, less crowded option for parking. This would allow a reduction in the volume of vehicles being parked at certain facilities, which would result in less frustration and stress for parking. As noted in our analysis, there are many situations where parkers do not follow the rules of parking in garages. In our survey, we included a photograph of a sports car clearly outside of the designated parking slot to optimize the space between the individual's vehicle and the other vehicles parked next to it. These parking practices obviously resulted in emotions of anger from the respondents, but would pose an interesting problem for an autonomous vehicle attempting to park in the spot that the sports car is partially occupying. Design teams would have to think through these aspects of how autonomous vehicles would park themselves when other drivers do not necessarily follow the rules associated with parking. This concept goes beyond just parking vehicles, but would also need to be addressed in the realm of general driving. This may be a situation where there are certain spots that can only be used for autonomous vehicles, similar to carpooling spots, to avoid the issue of an autonomous vehicle having to park next to an individual who cannot follow the rules of parking. As with all new and exciting services, it is not unknown that people with greater means can afford newer luxuries. There would be a great portion of the community that would not be able to afford a drop-off service from an autonomous vehicle, 
with an even larger subset that could not afford to purchase and operate an autonomous vehicle. These services would have to consider its affordability within diverse economic environments such as the SJSU population. As revealed from our research, financial costs for parking and transportation are already a major concern for students. Would autonomous vehicle services work with SJSU to provide a student rebate? How would these services impact the student population at SJSU? How would these services affect long-distance commuters? Not unless autonomous vehicle services are financially reasonable do we think students will respectively accept it. In addition, we also forecast that autonomous vehicle services will also hinder other driving jobs as well as the surrounding downtown community. Would autonomous vehicles increase urban inequality? How would it impact the homeless community? Would it help somehow? These are some of the questions that still need to be addressed and to which anthropological inquiry can contribute in the foreseen future of parking culture.